In today's video, we're going to be making these reindeer cake toppers. So nice and simple. We're going to be using the Saracino modeling paste for these guys. Not the purple one. <laughs> we'll run through what we use in the video. Now, if you've been to Cake International, you might have seen that we've been making these on the Saracino stand there. So don't worry if you did miss it. I'm going to show you how to make them now. So we're gonna start with the body and I'm taking 35 grams of paste. So I'm making this very much in the same way that we made the gingerbread men. So you may have seen that tutorial that I uploaded the day before. It's the same color paste. So we've got some Saracino paste again and we've mixed some brown and orange together for this. So we've gone for a cone shape for the body and then we've taken 70 grams of paste for the head. So we're gonna roll that to a nice round ball and we're just gonna flatten it slightly, just making sure it's nice and smooth on the surface. You can flatten the ball underneath if you want where the sort of the chin area is going to be. Next, I'm gonna make some light brown and I'm gonna take about 20 grams of white modeling paste. So I'm using the Saracino modeling paste for this, but we're just gonna mix a pinch of brown into that white to make a nice light brown. So I'm gonna cornflower my work surface so that the paste doesn't stick. And I'm just gonna roll it out nice and thin. So I've got a little sort of sausage shape we've rolled out thin and we're just gonna press sort of the top curved edge of it onto the body. Make sure you've got a nice point at the top of that body as well when you do make that body, just so we can insert that into the head later. Nip off any of that from the bottom, or you can cut it off. Whichever way you find easier is absolutely fine. Okay, so let's roll some more of this pale brown. So it's a very, very pale brown that we've made. And we're gonna use some heart-shaped cutters. I've just got a set of PME ones that I'm using here, and this is sort of the smallest of the hearts in the set. Just gonna sort of press down a little bit in the middle just to widen that there. I'm gonna add a little bit of water onto the back. Now you can use edible glue if you prefer. And we're just gonna stick this onto the face. So the point will be towards the bottom of the face and the top sort of rounded edges are gonna be sort of where the eyes sit. So press that down, smoothing it fairly firmly. And I'm just gonna mark in whereabouts I want those eyes to go. So this one's having closed eyes. So I'm gonna draw a little curved sort of arch just with my dress and tool. So let's have a look at what it looks like if we make a head but using a larger heart shaped cutter. So you just make the head in exactly the same way and a lot of this is just down to personal preference. I have kind of cut a little bit more out of that heart, sort of in the dip a bit in the middle at the top. You do get a bit more creasing at the bottom with a larger heart cutter but that's fine. We can cut that off and just press that down under the chin. It just gives you a different look so you can decide whether you prefer it with like the larger heart on the face which takes up sort of more of the eye area or whether you prefer it with the smaller one. You can press in slightly with your fingers as well if you want to flatten the eye area. And you will notice when I put the arch in with my modeling tool you can see through to the brown underneath so you can leave it as it is if you want. Also for my second head I've made another body in exactly the same way but I've rolled it slightly taller and thinner so have a bit of a play around with the sizing. I've still used 30 grams of paste for that body though. Okay, so let's just go over those lines we did for the eyes now. I've just taken a pinch of black, just a really small amount, and rolled it nice and thin, and then I've cut diagonally across the center. And we're gonna take it and just curve it so the point goes towards the inside corner, and then sort of that cut edge is towards the outside corner. And we've followed the indentation that we put in for the kind of arch of the eye earlier. I have added a little bit of water on them, so the first one has got kind of quite large flicked out sort of eyelash line. Or you can keep it smaller and just roll a tiny piece that just fills the arch like I have done on this one here. Now they're not going to start looking like reindeers until we give them a nose. So I'm just going to take a small oval of black modeling paste. So I'm using modeling paste for everything on this just because I find it a little bit easier to work with than using fondant. I'm going to do the same on the other one but we're going to use a red oval this time. So I'm just using the pre-coloured Saracino paste for this as well. Now let's add some detailing to the head. So sometimes little deers have like white dots, I think. Bambi does, doesn't they? I think. <laughs> okay, so some small dots. It's just the same as that pale brown that we used for sort of the eye area, just pressed onto the forehead. Try and get them slightly different sizes. Don't get them all the same size. You could even use an edible pen if you prefer rather than using the modeling paste for this. Also, I did forget to mention, guys, but you can do the nose in whatever size you like. You can make it as big or as small as you like. 
So where the ears are going to go, I'm just going to push my paintbrush handle in because it's a fairly thin paintbrush handle just to make a little indentation or hole to slot that ear into later on. I'm also going to use this sort of cone tool to just push in under the head. So you'll notice the bodies were tall and thin and they will then slot into that hole nicely. It should mean that we don't have to add any additional support. Sometimes you'll see I add like a wooden skewer or cocktail stick in for extra support. With this, as long as the body is pretty firm, the head should just slot in there, okay? Okay, so for the ears, I've got the same color that we used for the head. I've got about 0.7-ish grams, but you could go bigger or smaller with yours, it's fine. We're gonna roll it so it kind of is a little bit pointy at each end, just slightly, but not too long. And then we're gonna press that down flat. You can either use your finger or you can use that uh, cone tool. I don't know why I can't remember the name of the tool. Maybe it is cone tool, maybe it's not, I'm not sure. Take a slightly smaller piece of white, roll that into a teardrop, and then just press that into the middle of the ear as well. Now, if you've got teardrop shaped cutters and you prefer to roll it out and use cutters for this, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes when I haven't got cutters to hand, I just find it easier to sort of roll different shapes and sort of press them flat. So the wider end of the ear, we're just gonna pinch we're also going to pinch the top but not quite as much. That bottom end is going to be pinched and sort of pulled thin so that we can insert it into the hole in the head that we made earlier. So the top of the ear I've tried to make it a little bit pointy but try not to sort of fold it and crease it too much at the top. I'm going to add a small amount of water or you can use edible glue into those holes and we're just going to insert those ears into there. Just give them a little nudge in place if they feel like they're going to fall out. So next we're going to do some tiny little antlers. We're going to keep them small so that they stay on easier because the bigger we go, uh, the more they're going to want to sort of drop off and, and droop. So we're going to take some small little teardrops. Now I've used really small pieces here. You can play around with the size if you want. I've rolled them into carrot shapes. So for each side, I've done a slightly larger and a slightly smaller one and I'm sticking them together like that. So the points meet at the end and sort of the wider end, one is longer than the other if that makes sense. I'm not sure I explained myself very well there. Yeah. So we're gonna curve it slightly like that. And we'll do the same with the other one, curved in the other direction. And we're just gonna add these carefully into the same hole that we put the ear. So you might find that you have to maneuver the ear around just to fit that in slightly. Tuck it just behind the ear if you can, but make sure you can still see it. We're just gonna add a tiny highlight of white to the nose. Now, I'm using a small amount of white modeling paste just to stick on there with water, but if you prefer, you could paint that on with white food coloring or an edible pen. So I'm just gonna repeat all the same steps for the second face with the ears, the antlers, making sure there's a hole under the head that the body will fit into. Now, if you prefer when adding your ears, if you prefer to add your antler to the ear first before you stick it in the hole as well, that's absolutely fine to do. This one I've just kept really simple with just one of those little teardrop or carrot shapes rather than two. So I've just made sure that body has had plenty of time to firm up and then I can press the heads on in place. If you're happy with it, you can stick them on with a little bit of water or edible glue, or even if you've got some royal ice in hand, you could squeeze that inside the hole in the head and then place those onto the body. So whichever way you prefer. And again, if you don't feel confident that your body is setting firm enough, you can always add a wooden kebab skewer or a cocktail stick onto the top of the body or through the body and then press the head on and that'll just give you extra support. But if you think these are gonna be bitten by like a child or anything, cause they don't set overly hard, um, then try and avoid the stick if you can. So we'll just finish them off by adding a little bit of pink to the cheeks. I'm using an edible dust, so this is the Saracino pink. So make sure it's a dry brush that you are using. And we'll just get that on under the eyes. I think it just finishes them off nicely. And of course you can do that before pressing them onto the bodies, or you can do it after on the bodies, whichever way around you prefer. So don't forget guys, have a bit of a play around with the size of the body. So this one I've gone for a shorter, chubbier body and it just gives them different looks. You can change the colours of the antlers as well or even like the pale brown. So I've added a bit of yellow to that one. So there they are, all finished. Hope you enjoyed this video guys. Don't forget to check out all my other videos on YouTube if you enjoyed this one. As well as the gingerbread men and the frogs that we've also made at Cake International. You can find them on here too.